Hello, welcome back children. Today we have chapter kinetic theory for quick revision. We begin with kinetic theory of gases. As per kinetic theory of gases, all gas molecules are always in random motion except at 0 Kelvin. At 0 Kelvin, all the degrees of freedom are frozen. So, the kinetic energy becomes zero. During random motion, they will collide with themselves and also with the walls of the containing vessels. But due to the collisions among themselves, they would not exert the pressure on one another. Due to the random motion, average force on one another becomes nullified. But there is an average force from the part of the containing walls of the vessel due to which the molecules are under pressure. The pressure exerted by, average pressure exerted by molecules can be P is equal to 1 by 3 N M V RMS square or sometimes called P average has to be 1 by 3 N M V square bar where as per this notation V square bar means V RMS square. V square bar means V RMS square. So what is V RMS? So V RMS is nothing but square root of V square bar. That is root mean square velocity of gas molecules. Average velocity of all those gas molecules due to random motion is zero. But average speed is not zero. Average velocity is zero as it is a vector. Okay. Average pressure exerted by the gas molecules is given by this one. And this can be written like this. P average equal to 1 by 3 small n. Small n stands for number density of molecules. That is total number of molecules divided by volume of the container. Because that gas possesses entire volume of the container. As per kinetic theory, the total volume occupied by the container or by the gas is much much larger than the volume, actual volume of total volume of gas molecules. Okay. That is why the relative spacing between molecules is much much larger because gases are at higher potential energy state. Solid liquid gas greatest potential energy state is gaseous state. So n is equal to n by v stands for what? Number density. Small n stands for number density. Number density is total number of molecules divided by volume. Then 1 by 3 n by v, 1 by 3 n and m stands for mass of one molecule. All molecules are elastic spheres. Mass of one molecule is m. Similar molecules are present in the container having constant volume. And total number of such molecules divided by volume is called the number density. M by 3 n by v m into v r m s square v r m s square so this formula is very important and from this we can also say that n into m is what n into m is the total mass of all molecules that is why we multiply and divide by 2 here so, multiplying and dividing by 2, 1 by 2, Nm, Vrms square, rearranging, writing V in the denominator. So, multiplied and divided by 2. See this difference. 1 by 2, Nm is the total mass of all the molecules. Vrms square is the square of root mean square velocity. Okay, you cannot take velocity of individual particles over the large statistical population. 
we have to take root mean square value for getting the average pressure. We have to choose RMS value, not average velocity. For getting average pressure, we have to choose RMS velocity, not average velocity. Average velocity is zero. That is P average equal to, I am writing P average as simple P equal to 2 by 3 into V I am carrying to the left side. PV equal to 2 by 3 into half of total mass into RMS velocity square will be the total kinetic energy of all the gas molecules. So, E stands for total kinetic energy of all the gas molecules. So, total kinetic energy is equal to 3 by 2 PV. All these results are very important. Total kinetic energy equal to 3 by 2 PV. But as per kinetic theory, as per gas law, PV, the product PV can be written as N K B P, where K B stands for Boltzmann constant. Okay, N stands for number of molecules, where N by N A is equal to N by N A is equal to number of moles, where N A is the Avogadro number. That can also be written as actual mass divided by molar mass. So, number of moles can be expressed as n by n a or m by m zero. So, value of gas constant is r. r is equal to n a k b. All this formula need to be by her touch. r is equal to n a k b. Universal gas constant value is h.31 joule mole inverse, Kelvin inverse up to three significant figures. Value of Boltzmann constant easy to remember. Write it 1.38. Take re reverse order. Don't forget to multiply it with 10 to the power minus 23 units. Joule Kelvin inverse. So, all these results are very important. So, relation between Boltzmann constant and Avogadro number is R is equal to NAKB or NAKB equal to R. Mu is N by N A, M by M0. M0 is the molar mass and M is the actual mass. Values also to be noted. So, as per ideal gas equation, PV equal to NKBT, where T is the temperature in Kelvin scale. N is the total number of molecules. But we have seen PV equal to 2 by 3 E. So, PV equal to 2 by 3 E. Also, PV equal to NKBT. That is why you can write 2 by 3 E is equal to NKBT. That is E equal to 3 by 2 NKBT. And writing this for 1 mole. For 1 mole. 1 mole. N should be Avogadro number. So, E is equal to 3 by 2 N A K B T. And this equation is for 1 mole of ideal gas. And the first equation is for total kinetic energy of N molecules of the gas. Second equation says total kinetic energy of Avogadro number of molecules or total kinetic energy of 1 mole of molecules. 1 mole of ideal gas at temperature. T Kelvin. Repeating. E is equal to 3 by 2 N K B T. I am bringing that N to the left hand side. That is total kinetic energy divided by number. Sum divided by number gives average. So, average kinetic energy. Average kinetic energy is only depending on temperature. Average kinetic energy only depends on Temperature. Then what is the significance of this 3 here? Assuming the gas to be monatomic. Assuming the gas to be monatomic. Assuming the gas to be monatomic. The monatomic gas have got only 3 degrees of freedom and that also is translation. So number of degrees of freedom is equal to 3. Translational, three translational degrees of freedom. So, average kinetic energy is given by 
or kinetic energy per molecule also written as internal energy average kinetic energy or kinetic energy per molecule is written as internal energy that is generally expressed as number of degrees of freedom into half kb t this is per mole per mole mu is equal to 1 per mole okay or per molecule maybe per molecule not per mole per molecule so n is equal to n or n is equal to n so what is the average kinetic energy per molecule that is f into half kbt where f is the number of degrees of freedom therefore internal energy can be written as a general formula u is equal to f into n into half kbt where n is the total number of molecules for avogadro number of molecules it only depends on temperature as well as degrees of freedom as degrees of freedom is a constant for monatomic gas we say that it only depends on temperature so u is equal to f into n into half kbt so internal energy is the total kinetic energy divided by number of molecules that is average kinetic energy that is kinetic energy per molecule he is only depending on temperature for monatomic gases because for monatomic gases f is a constant that is 3 that only there is 3 translational degrees of freedom so e by n equal to 3 by 2 kbt that formula is very important okay then once again we know ideal gas equation pv equal to mu rt written for mu moles where v is the volume of mu moles of ideal gas but we have the formula before pv equal to 2 by 3 e substituting that here pv equal to 2 by 3 e so 2 by 3 equal to mu rt so e equal to 3 by 2 mu rt e stands for total kinetic energy of mu moles then kinetic energy per mole that may be the internal energy per mole that only depends on temperature for monatomic gas here also it can have a split up 1 by 2 rt into 3 so 3 translational degrees of freedom each degrees of freedom carries half rt alone so each degrees of freedom carries energy half rt in thermal equilibrium means in steady state at constant temperature system itself divides total energy equally each of the degrees of freedom will have half rt each degrees of freedom gets half rt each translations translation along x axis half rt translation along y axis half rt translation along z axis is also half rt so energy per mole is given by 3 by 2 rt that is 3 into half rt energy per mole so the general formula here can also be e equal to f into mu into half rt students remember if r is the universal gas constant so this will be mu is the number of moles if the constant comes is boltzmann constant here the number should be number of molecules so the second equation i will write it together here f into n into half kbt any one of these equations are useful for you it's very important okay so while finding total internal energy for example in last few years repeatedly this question was asked while finding total internal energy of mixer of gases total internal energy of two moles of oxygen two moles of oxygen and four moles of helium how to write it u equal to two moles of oxygen two number of moles two number of degrees of freedom oxygen there are five degrees of freedom you neglect vibrations there are three translations and two rotations for oxygen as oxygen is a diatomic molecule 
A diatomic molecule has three translations and two rotations. So, 3 plus 2, 5. So, 2 into 5 into 1 by 2 RT plus 4 moles of helium. See, helium is monatomic. So, helium has only three translational degrees of freedom. So, into 3 into half RT. So, you get 5 RT plus 6 RT that is 11 RT. Most of the papers in last few years this repeatedly the same question was asked as integer also that answer was 11 same, uh, choice also was there. From this CP, CV, gamma all this all that would have been asked. Okay, so U is a function of number of degrees of freedom as well as number of moles or molecules then absolute temperature means temperature in Kelvin scale. So, here this principle employed is internal energy conservation. Total energy is the sum of energies, internal energies of each at steady state or in thermal equilibrium. Okay. Here we have neglected vibrations. So, what is the difference between all that? Let me conclude. If it is a monatomic gas, monatomic gas has got only three translations. So, each translation will have half RT per mole, half KBT per molecule. Diatomic gas. Diatomic gas will have three translations and two rotations. If it is polyatomic, it can have three translations and three rotations in general. But there are certain polyatomic molecules which are linear. On the stretch is linear like carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, even when it is polyatomic, stratomic, it is linear. That's why it can have only two rotations. Carbon dioxide has three translations and two rotations. We are neglecting vibrations here in all these cases. Then there will be three translation plus two rotation, five degrees of freedom. Oxygen, three plus two, five. Nitrogen, three plus two, five. Carbon monoxide, three plus two, five. We have neglected the vibrations. If vibrations include what happens? If vibrations come in each vibration, there is kinetic energy as well as potential energy. In each vibration, kinetic energy is there as well as potential energy. That kinetic energy alone will get half RT per mole, half KBT per molecule. Potential energy alone will get half RT per mole, half KBT per molecule. Therefore, half RT plus half RT, kinetic plus potential will be half RT plus half RT, you get 2 into half RT, that is RT. So, what is the amount of energy at thermal equilibrium possessed by each mole of ideal gas per vibration? Per vibration, per mole it is RT. Per vibration, per molecule it is KBT. Okay, 2 into half KBT becomes KBT. Okay, vibrations also may be asked. Let us generalize. If there is a polyatomic gas, a polyatomic gas with three translations, three rotations and F vibrations, how would you write internal energy as earlier? Three translation, three into half RT per mole I am writing. Three rotations again 3 into half RT per mole. Okay, per mole half RT. So, uh, how many moles are there? Only one mole we have taken. Okay, that's why I am writing like this. For no more number of moles, you multiply with number of moles. Plus F vibrations. One vibration itself is RT. So, F vibration F RT. So, this one will be 3 by 2 plus 3 by 2. That is 6 by 2. 3, 3 RT, 3 RT plus F RT, that is U as 3 plus F into RT taken as common. From this we can write in chapter thermal properties we have also revised specific heat capacity at constant volume, U is equal to mu u is equal to formula we have learned mu delta u equal to mu cv delta t so specific capacity at constant volume is 
delta u divided by delta t delta u by delta t for one mole we are writing that implies 3 plus f r then cp specific heated constant pressure is equal to delta u by delta t replaced by delta q by delta t we can easily get that answer by using Mayer's relation Cp equal to Cv plus R for one mole Mayer's relation can be expressed like this where Cp is the specific heat capacity at constant pressure per one mole Cv specific heat per unit mole Cp equal to Cv plus R so Cp equal to 3 plus Fr plus R that is 4 plus Fr so that ratio of specific heat Cp by Cv equal to 4 plus f divided by 3 plus f. So, this is very important for what type of molecules? Polyatomic molecules with 3 translations and 3 rotations also with f vibrations. Okay. Only use for 3 translation, 3 rotation, this shortcut. Whatever number you can find it out quickly like this. This is a basic principle. So, gamma equal to 4 plus f by 3 plus f for polyatomic aspects. Okay. Let us uh, choose another uh, application here let us practice how to find gamma if number of degrees of freedoms are given how to find gamma how to find internal energy if number of degrees of freedoms are given let us uh, find out a general form okay internal energy equal to if there are uh, f number of degrees of freedom f number of degrees of freedom Totally, there are f number of degrees of freedom. What is that? Internal energy is equal to f into, if you write per mole, f into half rt. Then what is Cv? That would be f by 2r. Then what is Cp? f is the number of degrees of freedom. So, Cp is equal to what? Cv plus r. That is f by 2r plus r. So, Cp equal to r into 1 plus f by 2. Therefore, gamma is equal to Cp by Cv. So, gamma equal to 1 plus f by 2. That is gamma equal to 2 plus f divided by 2. So, that formula is also important. If 3 is equal to, if f is equal to 3, if number of degrees of freedom is 3, that would have been written 3 plus 2 by uh, 2 gamma, provided f is the number of degrees of freedom. We have not chosen uh, any difference in that vibrations, uh, translations, etc. Internal energy is f into half rt, Cv is f by 2 r. Therefore, Cp is f by 2 r plus r, Mayer's relation. So, r taken as common, 1 plus f by 2. So, gamma equal to Cp by Cv, that is gamma equal to 1 plus f by 2, where f is the number of degrees of freedom. So, gamma equal to 2 plus f by 2. This formula can be used, the number of degrees of freedom, number of degrees of freedom is given by the letter f. If u stands for internal energy, then internal energy can be written as f into 1 by 2 kbt that is internal energy per mole internal energy can also be expressed as f into number of moles into half rt for internal energy per mole you divide by mu so u is equal to f into half rt where r is the universal gas constant na is the avogadro number Na kb equal to r. So, as per kinetic theory, each of those molecules under pressure, that pressure can be expressed as 1 by 3 nm vrm square. R is equal to Na kb. Internal energy can be expressed as f into n into half kbt over f into mu into half rt. All these equations are important. The equation for that pressure, let us write once again. P average is equal to 1 by 3. 
N M V R M square V R M square before we have written the equation for pressure like this P V is equal to 2 by 3 E this formula is also important from this E can be written as 3 by 2 P V E can be 3 by 2 P V and also the formula for RMS velocity, VRMS from this equation for pressure, we can write VRMS as to be root of 3 P average by rho, root of 3 P by rho. How? The formula P is equal to 1 by 3 Nm VRMS square. Here, what is N into M? N into M is the total number of molecules divided by volume into mass of one molecule. Okay, total number of molecule into mass of one molecule gives total mass of the molecule. Divided by the volume gives Nm. Mass by volume gives density. So, pressure can be written as 1 by 3 rho times Vrms square. Then Vrms equal to root of 3p by rho, but p by rho, in several examinations, this was asked, p by rho can be written as, as per ideal gas equation, Rt by m0, for one mole, for one mole, p by rho can be written as Rt divided by m0. So, Vrms equal to root of 3Rt by m, where M stands for the molar mass. So, I am putting the suffix. Vrm is equal to root of 3rt by m0. See this equation. P is equal to 1 by 3 n m Vrm square. Vrm square can be written as 3 r t by m0. And this can be also expressed as capital M by V into m into r t divided by m0. We can explain many things based on uh, these equations. This equation is same as PV equal to uh, mu RT. This equation is PV. P into V is equal to N into M is total mass. Total mass by M0 is what? Number of moles. So, this V carries here PV. N into M is total mass. Total mass by M0 gives mass. Uh, number of moles into RT. So, PV equal to mu RT. Same equation is this. Hope that you understood. So, pressure varies with what all parameters? For example, if a process is isothermal, what we have learned earlier in uh, previous chapter. If process is isothermal, temperature is a constant. When temperature is a constant, pressure proportional to 1 by V for fixed mass, for given amount of ideal gas, at constant temperature, pressure varies inversely with volume. At constant volume, fixed mass. Fixed mass means Nm by M0 all constant. At constant volume, pressure proportional to temperature. What happens if an exp expansion is happening adiabatically? A gas is undergoing, a gas is undergoing an adiabatic expansion. Gas undergoes adiabatic expansion, that volume increases. When gas is expanding adiabatically, its volume increases. Adiabatic expansion, volume increases. Then it's what happens to the temperature? We have learned that when gas is expanding adiabatically, temperature decreases. Then pressure is also decreasing. When gas undergoes adiabatic expansion, temperature is decreasing then we have learned that pressure is also decreasing. So, adiabatic expansion causes more reduced pressure. The change in pressure is larger in comparing with isothermal expansion. So, to same changes in volume isothermally and adiabatically, change in pressure is more with adiabatic expansion. It is because of these two reasons that adiabatic expansion, temperature decreases, volume increases. So, these type of questions can be easily answered by using this equation. So, this equation is the basic equation of this chapter. Here we have uh, studied about 
ideal gas equation, average pressure, relation between Boltzmann constant, universal gas constant, Avogadro number, uh, then temperature dependence of pressure, basic equations of pressure. All this uh, we have learned. The uh, next topic is regarding mean free path. Mean free path. What do you mean by mean free path? The topic is mean free path, which we have to con continue with mean free path. It's a very important topic and many of the previous examinations, this question was asked. Mean free path. Mean free path is the average of all free paths of molecules. As per kinetic theory, from the very beginning we used to discuss kinetic theory only. Molecules are in random motion. Molecules are having large intermolecular space. So intermolecular force is negligible. That's why intermolecular potential energy is negligible or neglected means zero. Only gas molecules possess kinetic energy. Potential energy neglected. As intermolecular force is neglected, kinetic energy only considered potential energy neglected. So, molecules exert force among one another only when they are in contact. That is why the space between two neighboring collisions molecules will travel in straight line. Each of the molecules will travel in straight line. Molecules travel in straight line between two successive collisions. The average of all such lengths, average of all such lengths, average of all such lengths is called mean free path. Okay, if any one molecule goes in straight line within the next collision happening, the path length is called free path. Average is called mean free path. The general formula for mean free path of molecules taken in a tube tube the tube is of tube the tube is of diameter tube is of diameter 2d or radius d in which molecules of diameter d is considered so diameter of a molecule is d radius of that tube is also d it is to ensure the chance of minimum chance of collision between two molecules just grazingly passing one another in the tube let the length of the tube be l the mean free path of molecules each of mass m and number density n number density means total number of molecules by volume of the tube 1 by root 2 pi n d square this can also be written by substitution mn equal to rho so n is equal to rho by m so m by root 2 pi rho d square one more substitution PV equal to PV equal to NAKBT. PV equal to NKBT for number of molecules. So P can be written as N by V is N. So NKBT. So that N is equal to P by KBT. This formula is also very important. Students asked frequently. Number density equal to pressure. Pressure should be taken in Pascal. Temperature in Kelvin, substitute Kb. So, N is equal to P by Kbt. N is the number density. If you substitute that, you get another formula. That Kbt divided by root 2 pi rho d square. Okay, with that you have to also notice the mean free time. Mean free time is the average time between successive collisions. Mean free time. Mean free time or collision time, time interval, reciprocal of which is called collision frequency. Mean free time tau is equal to, mean free time is equal to, time is equal to distance by speed, right? So, mean free path divided by average speed. 
the formula for average speed that is not discussed in our textbook the formula is square root of 8 r t by pi m the formula for most probable speed that also not discussed in our material in our ncrt text but we have to just go through this most probable speed of ideal gases root of 2 r t by m so here we need average so tau is equal to lambda lambda divided by v average this formula is also important okay so tau can be expressed as lambda 1 by root 2 pi n 1 by root 2 sorry 1 by 1 by root 2 pi n d square 1 by root 2 pi n d square divided by what is the formula root of 8 r t divided by pi n so all this formula uh, can be used for comparison uh, for example in 2020 mains paper one important question was asked it's very uh, good question and that was asked like this if you have a rigid container rigid container in a rigid container if the uh, gas is heated what happens to the mean free path in a rigid container we know its volume is a constant at constant volume volume constant rigid container volume constant then pressure proportional to temperature we have to uh, use this proportion Gay-Lussac's law p proportional to temperature so when the container is heated gas is heated inside a rigid container temperature is increasing so pressure is increasing when temperature is increasing proportionately pressure is increasing here it should be kbt pi pi p it is not rho p Okay, by substituting P by KBT, we get P here. Okay, right? It's not rho P. Rho appears here. Rho appears here. Where M is in the numerator, it is rho denominator. T in the numerator, P should be in the denominator. So, T by P is a constant. T by P is a constant. So, mean free path does not change. Okay. But if a gas is uh, heated isothermally, Gas is heated isothermally. How it happens? It is heat is added isothermally. What happens? Then temperature is a constant. Isothermally means temperature is a constant. At constant temperature, we know pressure varies inversely as its volume. Given amount of gas. Isothermally, it is heated. Isothermal uh, expansion isothermal expansion so that heat causes uh, the gas to expand when expansion volume increases isothermally when volume increases we know pressure decreases but temperature is a constant isothermally gas is expanded allowed to expand in a container then volume increases pressure decreases then mean free path increases mean free path increases Okay, like these questions may be asked. Also, that may be asked based on the collision time interval. Collision time is proportional to lambda divided by V average. Okay, so V average also we have to take into account. Collision frequency is the reciprocal of this mean free time. Okay, now we have uh, discussed internal energy per mole per degree of freedom internal energy per mole per degree of freedom that topic is very important in calculating the values of gamma that more topic is only left for revision for monatomic gas monatomic gas we know internal energy can be expressed as internal energy can be expressed per mole 3 into 1 by 2 RT. Then specific heat at constant volume, 3 by 2 R. At constant pressure, 5 by 2 R. Then gamma is equal to 5 by 3. Okay. 
So internal energy can be written as 3 into half RT. So CV equal to 3 by 2 R. Then internal energy for diatomic gas. Diatomic gas. Internal energy, there are 5 degrees of freedom. So 5 by 2 RT. CV equal to 5 by 2 R. Then CP equal to 7 by 2 R from Mayer's relation gamma equal to 7 by 5. So as atomicity increases, the value of gamma decreases. Like this, for linear triatomic, linear triatomic with no vibration, no vibration, vibration zero. So three translation plus two rotation. So this looks like this, three translation plus two rotation need not go for any other further calculation like this. If vibrations are also accounted, you have to take that also. Okay. Is it clear? Then let me conclude with all those we have discussed today. The major topic is average pressure, gas loss. Gas loss, all that we have discussed in previous chapters also. Average pressure is 1 by 3 nm VRM square. VRM is equal to root of 3p by rho. VRM is equal to root of 3rt by m0. NAKB equal to R. Mu is equal to N by NA. 4 mu is equal to M by M0. Pressure P is equal to small n KBT, where small n is equal to P by KBT, small n is the number density. MN equal to rho. Lambda equal to 1 by root 2 pi n d square. Average speed root 8 RT by pi m, most probable speed root of 2 RT by m. RMS speed root of 3 RT by m. Okay, it's uh, very important to know all these equations. In addition to that, you have to go through Dalton's law of partial pressure, Graham's law of diffusion, Avogadro hypothesis, all that we uh, used to learn in chemistry also. Dalton's law of partial pressure is very important. Total pressure is the sum of partial pressures. Total pressure of non-interacting gases taken together in a container is given by P is equal to P1 plus P2 plus etc. If two gases are taken, P1 can be written as mu1 R T divided by V in the same container, mu1 R T by V plus mu2 R T by V. That is the total pressure. That is total pressure is equal to R T by V into mu1 plus mu2. So total pressure can be divided into the ratio of number of moles will be the partial pressure of each of those gases. Now Graham's law of diffusion says that rate of diffusion is directly proportional to square root of temperature. Also rate of diffusion is inversely proportional to square root of density. Other one, Avogadro hypothesis. Equal volume of all gases contain equal number of molecules. And the molar volume, importance of calculations, molar volume appears 22.4 liter. All that we uh, detailed study usually done in chemistry classes. Okay, with that we uh, conclude with this chapter, kinetic theory. We will be continuing with the next chapter, uh, oscillations as well as followed by waves. Thank you.